Okay, welcome to segment number five of the Chess Lessons from Snow's Chess Academy. Uh, today we're going to learn about the language of chess. Uh, we have uh, an important element here. Uh, not always the most exciting, but one of the most important elements in learning chess is knowing the language of chess. So, let me just direct your attention here to our whiteboard, our very high-tech presentation today, using an old-fashioned whiteboard as we learn about chess notation. We use chess notation to read moves, to write them down, and to speak them when we're in class. Um, most everybody writes down their moves in a what our little makeshift score sheet uh, here, um, in which we, uh, we write down our moves, and that way we can replay our games and learn from them. And we can also read about other games from famous players. All right, so in a nutshell, we start with the symbols. When we want to indicate that a king has moved, we write down K for a king. And then we would write down the name of the square that the king had moved to. We use the letter Q for queen, no surprise there, R for rook, B for bishop, and N, since the K has already been secured by the king, we use N for knight. Now, the, the lowly pawn does not even get a letter. We simply use the square name that the pawn moved to. Not where he moved from, but where he moved to, to indicate a pawn move. We use the letter X to indicate a capture. We use the plus sign to indicate a check. And we use the number or pound sign to indicate mate. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to play through a little sample game. We'll start off with... Uh, the scholar's mate, uh, some known as the four-move checkmate, and so we'll try to do uh, a little bit of extra teaching in addition to notation here. Uh, we're going to start off with the move, moving the pawn two squares towards the center. Can you see the name of the square where this pawn is? Remember, we line up the file name with the rank, and we have the simple move e4. So all we're going to do now to indicate white's first move over here on the whiteboard is e4. All we did was write down the name of the square the pawn moved to. Notice we write white's moves on the left side of the board and black's on the right. So really a move is in fact a half move. White has made half of the first move. Black will now make the second half. Let's take a look over here at our demonstration board. Black will now answer with a move that counters white's and we would refer to this as the square the pawn moved to, which is e5. And we would simply write it down as such over here. Notice we use lowercase letters for square names and uppercase letters for piece names. We want to make that differentiation because there's a big difference between uh, lowercase b, which would be the b file or the b pawn, and capital B, which would be a bishop. So we don't want to get those confused. All right. Now, uh, our second move for white is, as we look at the demo board here, is bishop to c4. Bishop to c4, we use our b for bishop over here on the whiteboard, and the name of the squirt move to on the c file, and the fourth rank, bishop to c4. So we're going to write down a capital B, lowercase c, and the number 4 to indicate the move that's just been made. All right, black will answer over here on the demo board with N, C, 6. The knight moves to C, 6, okay? And again, the letter we use for the knight is the N. N, C, 6, pardon my penmanship. And white will now respond with a very powerful and mate-threatening move Q, H5. I will point out that White has engaged, has played real fast and loose with opening principles, which we're going to cover in the next, uh, in the next, in the next few lessons, by bringing the queen out very early, very risky, bringing the bishop out before bringing out any knights, also go, going against opening principles. And we're going to write down this move using, of course, Q for the queen, and the name of the square she moved to, which is H5. Okay, black will now respond, unfortunately not seeing the deadly threat on f7 with both the bishop and the queen converging upon it and only one piece, the king defending it. We're going to see that black unfortunately must not have seen this uh, threat. Black makes uh, the move knight to f6, 
which actually looks okay to the naked eye as it seems to threaten the queen, but it is completely inadequate to defending f7. We'll write down black's third move here as n, n, f, 6. And now white will end this game in a mere four moves with the move queen captures the pawn on f7 and gives checkmate. So let's take a look at this move, this fourth and final move, which has both a capture and a mate in it. Of course, we start with the piece that moved, Q for queen. We're going to use the X for captures, the square that the queen moved to, F7, and the number or pound sign for checkmate. All right, so this is a typical game score over here on the whiteboard, four moves, and the game is over. Now, if we were to, we would, if we were to go back and replay this game, we would see that Black's fatal move was knight to f6. And so what we would do if we were adding additional comments, and this is something we'll learn in later lessons, we would add a couple of question marks. Two question marks means it is a game losing move. Uh, we use exclamation points to indicate a very, very strong move. So to recap here, in chess notation, we use K for king, Q for queen, R for rook, B for bishop, N for knight, and the square name it moved to for the pawn, X for capture, plus for check, and number or pound sign for mate. Once you start writing down your moves, you will find that, uh, that you're able to go over your games quite successfully. Now, a typical score sheet, I'm gonna hold one up for you now here, looks much more like this, where there's a lot more room at the top for additional information, name of the tournament, the date, the ratings of the players, all sorts of other things which we can talk about later. Right, as for now, I simply want you to focus on the names of the moves. Remember, lowercase letters for square names, uppercase letters for piece names. White's moves go on the left, black's on the right. It's always a good idea, right after you've finished your game, to replay it quickly. This way you will capture any mistakes you made in notation, and we all do them. Do not feel bad if this is difficult. After all, you're trying to play the game, not to mention play it well. Uh, thanks so much for watching this particular segment here on Chess Notation. Feel free to refer back to it if you're trying to write down the moves for your game. Thanks so much for watching.